In this video, what I want to do is handle three tricky problems that students encounter when we're dealing with rational exponents. So the first example is going to be, uh-oh, did I not lose my thing? No, I didn't. Okay. So my first example is going to be 10 to the one half power times a, not 10, but let's say a two to the one half power. Okay. So what are we going to do here? Now, typically students remember the like, like rules of exponents, right? If I have, you know, a to the um, b times a to the c, well, then I can just go ahead and add the powers, right? a to the b plus c. But here's a problem though. That only works when the bases are exactly the same. So what's going to happen here? Like these bases are not the same. So I cannot do anything. I cannot combine them. I cannot use the rules of exponents. So what can I do? Well, one thing I can do is I can break up 10, right? Um, into a two times five. So if I break that up into a two times five raised to the one half power, times, um, that's a two to the one half. So times a two to the one half. Now what happens here is now notice here, I can use what we call the power to product rule. If I have a times B raised to the C that is equal to an a to the C times a B to the C. Okay. So what that means is now I can distribute this one half across multiplication here. So therefore I can say two to the one half power times a five to the one half power times a two to the one half power. Now, this is really cool because now I can kind of use the associative property, right? And I can rearrange the twos right next to each other. So I can say two to the one half times two to the one half times five to the one half. Okay. Now what happens here? Now I can use the product rule, right? And remember when we are uh, multiplying two exponents, right? We add the powers, right? So one half plus one half is just going to be one. So therefore that's going to be two to the one four, two to the first power, sorry, times five to the one half power. Now, if I wanted to rewrite this without rational expressions, I can go ahead and rewrite this as a radical. Just remember if I have a to the, let's say m divided by n, I can rewrite that as the nth root of a to the mth power, right? So therefore I can rewrite this as a two times the square root of five. And that is going to be your simplified answer. All right, let's go and take a look at another example. And this one's gonna again, come, kind of come into again with some more fractions, but now I'll give you the same basis but I'm not going to make the fractions as easy or at least a lot of times what students like to deal with. So in this case, I'll have two to the uh, one half times a two to the one third. Now there's a lot of mistakes that students like to do. And I think that a lot of the mistakes just come into, um, or students feel like this is so tricky is because they just don't want to deal with dealing with fractions. I think anytime I mention having to deal with fractions with students, it's like they always, they get this like urge of like, ah, oh, I don't want to do fractions. Like nah, it's just more work. And yes, unfortunately, like adding one half plus one half was easy, right? Because I had the same denominator, common denominator. But in this example, you can see that they do not have a common denominator. So when they do not have a common denominator, we have to apply the common denominator. So first of all, though, let's do a couple of things we don't want to do. We do not want to multiply the exponents, right? Or they'll multiply the powers. So it's not going to be two to the one sixth power. We also just don't want to add the denominators, right? It's also not two to the one fifth power. We got to get common denominators. So what we're going to do here is if I have one half plus one third, all right, what we need to say is what is the smallest number that two and three evenly divide into? And hopefully you recognize that the least common multiple or denominator in this case is going to be equal to a six. So now what I need to do is I need to obtain a six on both fractions. So to do that on the left-hand side, what I'm going to do is multiply by a three over a three, right? And remember, whatever you do in the denominator, you have to do in the numerator. On the right-hand side, I'm going to multiply by a two over two. Um, and the reason why you have to do that in the numerator and denominator, because that's going to produce what we call equivalent fractions. So in this case, I'll have a three over six plus a two over six. Now you can see, I can go ahead and add the powers, which is going to equal to a five over a six. So when I'm actually multiplying these out, what's going to happen here, guys, is I'm now clicking. So therefore I'm going to have a two to the one half plus a one third, which now I just figured out is going to be a five, six. So two to the five over six, which again, if I wanted to write this as a radical, I could write this as the sixth root of two to the fifth power. All right, let's go and get into another example, which is kind of like a combination of the first two of these two examples that I already did. So in this example, I have 30 to the two fifths divided by a six to the three fourths. Now this problem might um, not look like there's really anything benefit to simplifying this. And I'm not really sure if it's kind of worth, you know, what are, what are some different ways we can maybe express this problem? I'm not really sure if it's going to be a completely simplified, you know, problem, but there's a couple things that we can like kind of manipulate this problem with. And again, kind of going back to that first problem that we did, we can rewrite 30, 
right? As a product of five times six. And the reason why that's important is because I can't do anything with the, I can't do anything right now with the 30 and the six, right? Because they're different bases. The only way I can apply, apply my rules of exponents is when the bases are exactly the same. So the first thing let's do is let's go ahead and rewrite this as a five times six to the two fifths power divided by a six to the three fourths. Now, right, I can go ahead and rewrite this again, applying that power to product rule as a five to the two fifths times a six to the two fifths divided by a six to the three fourths. Okay. Now, again, the only thing really I can do here, don't divide out the sixes, right? We, we have to apply our rules of exponents, which again, we hear over here, when we were multiplying them, what do we do? We added them. So over in this case, when we are dividing them, we're now going to have to subtract our powers. So, you know, at least I can like simplify this to like a five and a six. And, you know, maybe that's going to be considered a more simplified example. I'm not really sure. So this would be five to the two fifths. And then this one is going to be a times, let's say six to the two fifths minus a three fourths. <sighs> okay. So let's go and do another example here. So I have two fifths minus a three fourths. Now let's go and see if you guys can come up with this common denominator here. Uh, let's see, what is the smallest number five and four evenly divided into? Hopefully you recognize that is going to be LCD is equal to a 20. So what I'll do here is I'll multiply by four on the left-hand side and a five on the right-hand side. So now when go ahead and do this, I get a eight twentieths uh, minus, I don't know where plus came from, minus a 15 twentieths, right? So eight minus, eight minus 10 is going to be a, um, seven. So that's a negative seven twentieths. Whew. Okay. So let's see here. We have a five to the two fifths times a six to the negative seven twentieths. And just remember when you have a negative power, you can go ahead and rewrite that in the denominator here. Um, negative seven twentieths. what I do? Yeah. So that's going to be, um, I was looking at something else that I did, negative 7 twentieths. Yes. What else was I looking for? I thought there was something else. Okay. Um, so I can rewrite this as a 5 to the 2 fifths divided by a 6 to the 7 twentieths. Um, so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully that video. Uh, oh, yeah. That were good. If you wanted to rewrite that as a rational power, that was that was it. I, I was looking. I was like, what else did I do here? So we can rewrite this, um, yeah, as a fraction. Yeah, there we go. We could leave this as a fraction numerator. You could rationalize the denominator. Um, and a lot of times, sometimes students will get that tricky um, back and from there. But I'm going to leave that off in, the, in this video. But hopefully in the next video, I'll, I'll have an example for you down there. I'll see you then. Cheers.